happy live stream eve <laughs> today's thursday the something and uh tomorrow's live stream day so i'm already excited I and mean, we had a good time last night on uh uh, two wheels down Swami his his page. We did a live stream last night. It was a blast hung out with uh, uh, Hells on two wheels and uh, a Couple of his nine mil two wheels and I Dyna guy Greg. These are all dudes. I just met which were awesome and then You know the beard was in the chat and arch my buddy from my channel in the chat like it was it was fun Anyway, so that was a good time. I'll put a link down below to his channel. You're gonna watch the live It was only an hour long. So it's very watchable um, but this morning I was chatting with my other buddy. We make so many friends on these channels, it's ridiculous. Uh, my buddy Bodine52, and I'll put a link to his down there because he sent me a message saying, Hey, I had a run in with an MC, and I know you swim in those waters, so would you watch the video before I launch it to see if there's anything <laughs> that's a bit off? And I did, and there was one thing that I picked out that was actually really good that I, that I was like, Just leave that in. There's a lot of learning to be done there, you know? And uh, so we had got on this topic of, should I do an MC video? And a lot of you out there have said, do a, do a club, you know, sort of how to thing. And, and I did notes and they were three pages and I recorded the video and it was 52 minutes long. <laughs> Something like that. I'm gonna have to cut this up. So today we're gonna talk about patches and things that will get your ass kicked. So, um, where this came from, this isn't from Bodine's video, nothing related to this, but that was just, this is just one of those kind of funny topics to talk about. Um, when you ride out there, whatever gear you wear, you might wear a cut, maybe you don't. A cut's a vest, in another word. Um, I do because the organization shall not be named. Uh, I don't think I've ridden without a cut in years, right? Um, I mean at all. Never been on a bike without it on in years. So, not to say if you're someone who doesn't wear one, that's fine. Um, anyone out there who thinks they're stupid, keep your friggin' opinion to yourself. Probably don't know what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> sorry, mom can give you a hot pocket. Ask for that. Um, so, you know, teach their own, really. Teach your own out there. But there are a couple things you can do patch-wise and, and attitude-wise and bars that will get your ass kicked. And I thought that I would just share that because I have a really good uh, personal story related to it. Um, I might even turn this into a series about MC's structure and this and the other because it's one of my favorite topics. I grew up around it with my dad, with his friends that were part of rather legitimate clubs uh, and uh, he himself, you know, riding in the back and spending time around one percenters as a kid and this and the other. So it's, it's something I'm passionate about and I think it's a great culture you know what i mean like there's some great freaking dudes out there that are parts of clubs that i've loved to death and and even though i'm not part of their organization we quietly call each other brother in person because you just you know you don't want to you know break protocol but um to them protocol is everything there's traditions and procedures and rules and these things matter to them and there are ways to really step on somebody's toes and not necessarily know it uh, and specifically patch stuff on your cut, you normally can spot when someone's just made a mistake and they just don't know any better by the cleanliness of their patches. Uh, I, maybe this is wrong, I don't think so. It's just sort of something that in, in my organization, we judge by the cleanliness of your patches. Um, if they're sparkling and white and clean and <laughs> whatnot, then there's probably a lot of learning you still can maybe do, you know? Uh, if they are dirty and you can't even tell what one says, it's just a black square, because, you know, everything's covered in road grime and spilled beer and, you know, miles, not your back patch, you don't spill your beer in your back patch, but, the, you know, from, um, that, that, then there's probably a lot that could be learned from you, you know? Um, so when you see them and they're sparkling clean, you know that they probably are newer to this whole wearing a vest thing and they just don't know. The first way to get the ever living crap beat out of you is to put a 1% patch on your vest if you don't know what that means. <laughs> Cause you can buy them, man. Like you go to rallies and you go to the patch lady or patch dude, you know what I'm talking about, with all the sayings and the whatnot. And, uh, and you could buy a 1% diamond patch and just have it sewn on your vest. 
That's insane. You're, you're representing something you're not. And this is the center, the central sort of message here is just don't be something you're not. You know, don't claim something because they're going to see it and they're going to question it, you know. But if you're rocking a diamond 1% on your vest and you don't know what that means, go right now and cut that off. Um, it means you're a one percenter. And if you're not, they're going to whoop your ass. It's, it's, it's going to be bad. And then they're going to cut it off for you. So don't rock a 1% patch if you're not. Um, beware of things that are rockers. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I don't care, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, someone might somewhere else. So you just got to be careful of things that, you know, have a top and a bottom with a middle insignia. Uh, Harley even sells those, man. I've seen them that say like Harley Davidson. I have a skull in the middle. It's a three-piece patch. I just wouldn't play Sons of Anarchy. I wouldn't go doing that stuff. Uh, and if you ever see a guy with one of those Sons of Anarchy vests that they bought on Amazon, save his life by ripping it off of it and throw him in the trash. Um, I haven't seen a single episode in my entire life because I refuse to watch a fictitious show about clubs. So, but I know that you can buy that crap and that is just bad, you know. Um, but my favorite don't do this story and some of you out there may have this patch and and i hope not and and maybe it's just because you don't know uh, and you just don't realize that it's no offensive to some people but the uh lone wolf no club independent stuff it can be represented a lot of different ways i've seen the wolf's head howling and it says lone wolf no club i've seen top and bottom rockers that'll say independent no club or you know all that kind of stuff and that is a bad idea it's just not it's just not necessary you know that's like to me that's like getting on a bike rolling down the highway in a vest with a patch on the back that says i'm not in a car yeah we know that we can see you know, it just, it's just stupid. It doesn't mean anything. And all it is, is sort of thumbing your nose down at people who are in clubs. And some of you out there are like, oh, yeah, 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 you, you need a safe space, blah, 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 blah. No, man, someone's going to whoop your ass. And I'm going to tell you the, a, a specific story. Um, seven, eight, nine of us from my organization rocked up to the local big hangout here several months ago. And we are friendly with all of the local clubs. Uh, we actually have a member who is devoted to that, that is responsible for managing relationships with clubs and knowing what's going on out there. And we saw the several members of the local affiliate support club of the major 1% dominant in our area. And they were there in a fairly decent number. And we know these dudes like these dudes and get along with these dudes really well. So we beeline for them to have a beer. Uh, don't do that if you don't know them. We already knew these guys. So we were able to walk up grab a hug, hug uh, grab a hug, grab a beer, sit down, smoke a cigar, and, and, and talk smack, and have a good time, tell some jokes. And I'm sitting there with them, and a um, couple of, about seven of us, about seven of them. I'm like, what's going on? And, and, the, and their uh, local VP was there, and he's like, uh, well, we're trying to figure out if we're going to kick this guy's ass or not. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, and not one of us, I hope. And he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's the guy on the other side of the bar. He's wearing a, no, a lone wolf no club patch in the top and on the bottom it says Florida. So this guy showed up wearing a patch saying, I'm not a part of a club, but I claim Florida. That's sort of like claiming a territory on his vest. And what he may not realize, he might think it's nothing. He might just think it's rebellious and cool and he bought it at the Leesburg patch lady and because it was sparkling clean, this dude's patches. And he may not realize how offensive that was to the real deal that we're sitting at a table in the back of the room. And they were talking about whether they were going to go grab him, take him outside and, and re-educate him on what that means and whatnot to sort of set an example. And I'm like, hey, you know, no disrespect. Let me be helpful if you don't mind. This is actually how I put it. Why don't, if you'd like, I'm happy to go talk to the guy and just have a conversation and nicely explain, hey, you may not realize that that patch is, you know, um, causing a rise out of the wrong people. And you might have just thought it was a cool patch, you might have this, that, and the other, it's probably purely innocent, but I highly recommend you go lock that cut in your bike and then later remove those patches. 
Um, and yes, he can take his cut off and go lock it in the bike. He's not part of a club. Some of you out there have said, no one takes my cut. Yeah, you're not part of a club, they can't. Um, so you might wanna go lock that up and secure it. And then later you can you know, deal with taking those off. And the guy can choose to go tell me to go screw myself. And then I can choose to go back to the table and go, try to help him, go break his legs. You know, like, and then, <laughs> and then they drag him out and take care of him. Um, Cause no matter how tough you think you are, there's someone tougher. Always remember that. Um, but we sat there and talked for a while and I said, you know, let me try and smooth this out for you and help out. And, and the guy was like, oh, man, 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 we'll just let it go. And, and they let the guy go. And this dude had no idea how close he was to getting the ever living shit beat out of him in a parking lot, you know? And it's just not necessary. It's not required. So why? So anyone out there who has the I'm independent, lone wolf thing on your vest um i just invite you to take a second look at that and go is it really necessary to tell every club out there i'm too good to be a part of a club that's what you're doing you may not mean it that way but that's how it's being received so i invite all of you to take a look at that and maybe maybe not so much do that anymore <laughs> i certainly wouldn't rock a territory you know but there's a lot of different ways you can walk into a bar and not know that you've you've broken protocol and 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 get in serious trouble and i've done this for going on 20 years in two states and uh um if you're nice if you're friendly if you're honest and you're always yourself and you never play a part that you aren't you'll be fine but walking in and trying to represent something that you aren't they're going to see that and they're going to test you and that's that's what they do and that's their job and you walked into their world you know what I mean? That's the problem. You walked into their world. Um, the other story about this is we had a local writing club and these guys were affiliated by having parts bought at the same shop. I'll just say that. And they all ride, rode the same style of motorcycle. And it started as innocent enough dudes who liked these custom bikes of a certain kind that were bought from a certain place in South Florida. And so they all sort of hanging out and someone had the bright idea to come up with this tough guy name. <laughs> for the, you know, some of you out there are already laughing. Tough guy name for the group. And so they had t-shirts made that said the name of their group, which is fine because they're a writing group. The name was pushing it, but it's a writing group. Writing groups are okay. You can have matching t-shirts. You're not claiming to be a club. You're not claiming a territory. It's okay. But then invariably there's going to be someone with a big ego and multiple big egos started coming into this group and they more and more started walking into bars and doing this thing against a wall because they had matching t-shirts uh and the funny thing is these dudes never rode the bikes have no miles on them anyway uh and they're doing this crap everywhere all over town and playing tough guy and and, and there were multiple altercations of guys trying to intimidate people because you never know who you're trying to intimidate. Some people out there are the real deal and they don't fly their colors all the time. So just be aware. Um, and that went on and on and on. And there were multiple sort of like, you know, hey, knock that crap off things. And, and they would stop and then it would come back and this, da, da, da. And they were known for throwing a big party. Um, these dudes tended to have a little bit of money in their pocket too. They throw a big party every year at this giant gathering. Somebody's getting it, son. Get it. Sounded good. Um, uh, and they always were known for throwing this big party. And one year, the dominant 1% in the region decided to send a half dozen dudes to the party. <laughs> and uh, I wasn't there. This is a secondhand, highly reputable knowledge <laughs> source. But how it went down is these guys go to the party um they then don't say a word they just walk in and go sit down in the corners by the exits and all the people are like yeah you know having a good old time at their little party and all of a sudden a couple of them are like why are that why are they why are they here like what's going on something's something's gonna go down when you see the real deal sitting in the corner quietly you're like i you know i got an appointment and they, and they slowly just you know sort of disappeared away away from the party and uh everyone left except for the dudes who were doing this you know and uh 
these half dozen guys, I don't believe a single punch was thrown because they're all still alive, so I'd imagine that that didn't happen. But um, there was a conversation had about knowing your place and knowing your role and not crossing certain boundaries. And um, it was supposedly a rather scary conversation, but nonetheless, it did its job and those dudes reeled it in a lot, a lot, uh, a little lot, reeled it in a lot around here and I haven't seen any drama lately. But um, just the central message here is go out and have fun. And if you wanna wear a vest, wear a vest and, and put your, you know, your patches, your pieces of flair from your different rallies, that's fine. I like to see them personally. I go out and I like to see like, dude's done an iron butt, been to Sturgis, done, you know, the dragon. And I like, to, I kind of, you know, look at that stuff and see where you've been and stuff. Not to judge, because I think it's fun to look at. Um, but I'm a badass, you know, blah, 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 lone wolf. Da, da, da. Just don't try and flex with the patches on your cut, because you're going to get your ass whipped. This is the message there. Um, anyway, so that's the story. Please do not forget a couple things. Uh, follow the link, check out Bodine's video tomorrow. He has a great run in with a local club. They're turn out to be great guys, so, uh, but, but a great video uh, with a big good learning bit in there. Uh, number one, number two, our own live stream is tomorrow night at eight o'clock. We don't do guests. Um, we just, at least we haven't yet. Is, is me and Mrs. Monkey sit and talk to each other. We talk about future plans. We talk to all of you in the chat. So you ask questions, we answer. If you want to talk about MC culture some more, come tomorrow night, ask questions in the chat, and we'll talk about it. We're an open book. There's no topics that are off, you know, for us. Um, and I feel like there's something else that I'm missing that's really important. And I don't know what it is. But so tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern time, come join us. Uh, and hang out for a bit. Check out Bodine's channel. Also check out Two Wheels Down, which was uh, uh, Swami who had us on last night and watched that live stream. It's only an hour long, which is great. Our, our live streams are like four hours, so not as easy to watch later, but uh, go check out Swami. It's only an hour. Good dude. Um, yeah, and that's it. So take care of each other out there. We'll talk soon. Bye.